Ted! <laughs> We're at RF Wittering. Here we go. Guards march. Oi, oi. So we're at RF Wittering to visit the gate guard, the Harrier. Look at it, the iconic jet. That is just so Britain. This base was known in history as the home of the Harrier. For those that don't know, the Harrier was a VTOL aircraft. Vertical takeoff and landing. It could just hover like a helicopter. And it was able to take off and land vertically. And Ted's just showing us a... An example. Thanks, Dad. Pilots are learning to fly the Harrier um, start their training in a helicopter. Their training was uh, two weeks at Shawbury, learning to fly a helicopter first. Simulator work could be about four weeks before a pilot even goes near a Harrier. Ted, you're right there, mate. Ted? Oh, there you are, mate. Good lad. So this is the uh, GR7. Um, there are Ted, nice one. Um, <laughs> there are lots of um, GRs you'll notice, and lots of different uh, variants of the um, the Harrier. And this is due to manufacturers and partnerships. Um, so it started off with Hawker Sidley. So the GR7, um, similar to the Hawker Sidley Harrier GR1. Um, but the GR1 ended service in 1969. The Harrier was partnership with McDonnell Douglas from then, and the results were more than double the capabilities of the GR1. I, I guess with as time goes by, um, things improve. So in 1969, the Harrier arrived at RAF Wittering, and it served here for over 40 years being involved in almost every major UK conflict, including the Falklands, uh, the Gulf War, Afghanistan. Um, so you'll see, um, and you would have noticed, the uh, markings uh, of number one fighter squadron. Um, so number one fighter squadron arrived in August 1969. Uh, number one fighter squadron left Wittering uh, for Cottesmore in 2000. But Wittering um, had the Harrier number four uh, reserves, uh, the OCU, Operational Conversional Unit, uh, which remained. Uh, number one squadron is now stationed at Lozimouth as a QRA, uh, frontline combat, uh, with Ted's fave, the Typhoon. Ted, you love those phones, don't you? Yeah, I know, calm down, calm down. Um, it was in Afghanistan that pretty much ended the service of this gate guard. The Harrier, uh, labelled the ZD Zulu Delta 469, uh, nicknamed the, uh, well, I'm going to say it, Christine. Don't think you are safe just because it's non flying and chained down. It has even got a kill as a gate guardian. I know, Ted, I know, calm down, mate. So, yeah, well, nicknamed Christine after the Stephen King's uh, movie of the possessed killer car, Christine. It had a history of bad luck, uh, falling off the jacks during maintenance work, for example, injuring technicians um, and injuring maintenance personnel, hitting power lines in Norway. Uh, but what should have ended its run of bad luck back in 2005 after suffering damage uh, during a rocket uh, attack um, on Kan uh, Kandahar Air Base in Afghanistan. I hope I pronounced that right. I have no idea. But it kept going. It was uh, totaled and beyond, shall we say, economical repair. Uh, Ted's just showing us a, a kill marking. We'll tell you about that. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool. That is actually a kill marking. Um, but it was repaired... Ted, you're right, mate. It was, <laughs> it was repaired externally to look pretty from the outside and was taken to RAF Cottesmore um, for, um, as a ground instructional airframe. Uh, then in 2011, uh, came to be the gate guard in uh, RAF Wittering. However, Christine, as we're going to call it, has claimed, as Ted showed the uh, kill marking, um, as, as it, it has a kill as a gate guardian. Can you believe that? I know, just sat there. Yes, that's right. Even has a kill marking. In 2018, a car crashed into Christine um, off the A1 and totally, well, totaled the car. Uh, the um, the car went straight into one of the missiles. Uh, it ripped right through the windscreen, nearly taking out the driver's head. Uh, driver survived, by the way. She is fine. Um, 
so yeah you can see the kill marking um, someone put the car there to uh, represent um, Christine destroying a car I mean you can't really trust these things here can you so just be guys be careful on the road there you go there's that one fighter uh, squadron's uh, emblem there so the GR7 uh, similar to the Hawker Siddeley uh, Harrier GR1 um, so yeah as we said it ended service in 1969 um, but the Harrier Ted Ted's doing an Ted's doing a VTOL um, like we, we called it the VTED That's Ted you, okay so the Harry the Harry went into partnership with McDonnell Douglas High Ted and the results were literally uh, more than double of its capabilities um, the GR7 over the max speed of around 662 miles per hour at a service height uh, of 50,000 feet a wingspan of 9.25 meters which is a uh, it's actually a whole meter uh, yeah it's a good meter less than Ted's uh, typhoon Ted Ted come back mate Ted's excited about all these little markings on there um, it was also packed with armament this Harrier uh, cannons, two of them I believe uh, Sidewinder, Maverick missiles Paveway bombs Laser guided bombs And lots more This is an absolutely iconic British jet And it's such a shame we've lost it It is such a shame I know Ted, I know Just have a little look around It is a much missed and much loved British jet so much history it's got serving in Iraq Falklands War served pretty much everywhere Ted what are you doing now mate you're still excited about this aren't you we're going to have to show some examples of it flying aren't we I think mate yeah I know I know Wee! <laughs> Ted calm down mate what are you going to do now And he goes again. Look at that beautiful jet. There's the uh, you can see the car there, the marking RF Roundel there. Oh, I was an absolutely stunning jet. I remember seeing this at uh, um, uh, the RNAS, the Royal Navy base in uh, Portland. I remember seeing. Okay, it wasn't the GR7, but it was a, a Sea Harrier. Oh my days! I was only ten, and it was amazing. I know, Ted. Ted, be careful that road, mate. What have we got here? Oh wow, nice. Oh, that's sweet. Ted, what are you doing now? That's it, a bit of guard march. Oh, this is where the car smashed into this. I know, pretty bad, wasn't it? Straight into the windscreen. Ted's just doing a display there. Actually, speaking of um, displays, we do need to mention 20 Reserve Squadron, and also its part in the Harrier GR7 display. So in 1992, um, 223 Squadron OCU um, were renamed to 20 Reserve Squadron. Um, in 2000, uh, 20 Reserve Squadron, um, including other RAF Harrier uh, Squadrons and Royal Navy Sea Harrier Squadrons, um, were under control of Joint Force Harrier. Um, it was 20 Squadron that played a part in the Harrier GR7 display. Harrier, clear takeoff, clear display, zero, three, seven, twin, zero, two, zero, so we got Flight Lieutenant Dave Haynes um, from 20 Reserve uh, Squadron displaying the uh, Harrier GR7. That's all good. Welcome aboard this Harrier GR7 for this year's Shore Air Show. All power. Okay, so many knots. There we go, staying. Gear coming up. Final wave, we've got 70 nozzle. 8 knots, 85 knots. Just keep climbing a bit so it looks level to the crowd. Gears come up. Just looking good for the 
out line. A bit more nozzle so we don't get too close to the crowd. Plenty of engine performance available. And the crowd, there's a 100 meter line, we're not going to bust that. There's 210 feet, slight descent to make it look level. Heading, looking for 325. So, there we are, well inside the 230 meter line. It's a gear warning. Saying, why am I descending at such a slow speed? It's not a problem. Okay, we're starting nozzle out now, looking for 325. There's 325. Okay, nozzle's fully off, got full power. Get rid of our stall flap, looking for 230 knots. 230, pulling up. 35 degrees angle bank. Check. Every roll. There you are, that's 2,000 feet. Okay, looking for the crowd line now. Setting up for an inverted pass. Three, three and a half to you around the corner. Accelerating all the time. I'm looking for 500 feet. Check and roll. There you are, 500 feet, 420 knots. Going past the crowd. There's the railway and check. Uh, five and a half G. Check and roll. Pulley back. It's two and a half thousand. 500 knots, five G. Six G there. Okay, looking for the line. Don't need as much power here. We're running in and up. And bow rolling towards the crowd. Being a roll out of the crowd centre. There we are, about there. And check. Eight on roll. And up, 5G. Check. Setting back up for the max rate turn. What full power for this one? 365 G, 370 knots. Let's keep the G on, keep it nice and tight. And check in. There's the crowd. Roar! Oh! And back round. Plenty of G, five and a half, six G. Climbing to make it look level. They're descending back down the other side. There's the college. Looking for 255. Five. Uh, there we go. That uh, check. Gee. Check. Whoa. Back down. Okay, this is a hundred foot pass. Right out of the hood. Okay, looking for 500 knots at least. Diving down. There's 100 feet. A check. And break. Six and a half at least. There we go. Okay, we're looking to approach on the 110 heading, the centre of the crowd. It's about there. Got an allowance for the wind. The stuff out the warning for the gear. Let's get rid of that. Thank you very much, we don't need that. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. There's the point I've picked. Now decelerating. Descending all the while. There's the gear warning, not a major problem. That's 25 knots. Still coming down. There's water flowing there. And sailing into 150 feet. Gear's coming down now. And oh, the 160. 
come to a stop, gears down, right, we go right turn 293. There we go. Bit of power, gear coming up. There we go, and let's go up. Go again for 40 degrees, those up. There we go, power off. Gears come up, that's a thousand feet. Now. Four greens. That caution's fine. Got 25 degrees nose down. There's the bounce. Gear up. Break and stop. Water. Take him for 150 feet. 100 minimum. There's the 100. Come on, there we go. There's 100. Turn to stop. And let's move backwards. Bit of nozzle. Stop climb. Let's come back at about 15 knots. go, 13, 12, coming back okay, your warning's fine, I reckon I'm back crowd centre there, and there we are at stop, hovering and turning, gear. still level, And we've got four greens, and break and stop. Okay, that's fine, and let's go sideways. Let's move back a bit towards the runway, so we use a bit of nozzle. Engine's fine, fuel's fine. About 15 knots sideways. Okay, we're back on the central runway, we'll just keep on moving back sideways. Okay, we're getting ready to stop now. There we are, plenty of fuel left, so let's go up. And let's do the 12. going down. Gear's definitely down. Got 50 knots. And landing is great. Flaps up, water's off, trims. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the GR7 display. Hope you enjoyed it.
hi guys I hope you enjoyed this video I, I firstly want to thank all my subscribers who have absolutely been legends helping um, Ted and I through this wonderful journey and please please if you're new please subscribe to our channel and we will bring you some amazing footage we've got all sorts of flights for Ted next year so please subscribe to Ted and his channel he's got his own little squadron his own little Ted Coningsby squadron and I, I, I can guarantee you he will bring you smiles for the rest of your time